Back on this Sunday morning with Dr. John Reiswick, who is the incoming superintendent of Knox County Schools. Dr. Reiswick, want to ask you about priority two from your own uh, little PowerPoint that you presented to the board, which is great educators in every school. Specifically, you talk about salary compensation in surrounding counties and Knox County. We rank seventh on your list. $56,000 in Knox County, the average salary for teachers. In Maryville, it's uh, $63,000. Again, we rank seventh. What's your plan to turn that around? That's a good question. And, and I think, you know, uh, part of that plan is we, we have to pay teachers what they're worth, which is which is a lot of money. You know, they're the ones who, uh, who, who do the work every day and really care for our students. Uh, and, and I think, you know, in the state uh, this past year, we were 32nd out of the 146th uh, uh, districts that, you know, that reported. Uh, if you look at the big five districts, the five largest, you know, we consistently over the last four years have been have been last um, of the five. Um, and so uh, I think I'll say this, you know, I know Mr. Thomas uh, has done a great job, Bob Thomas, of really making that a priority uh, to continue to do that. And, and I would want to continue to do the same, to continue to make those increases. I think we've been able to give a 4%. Uh, increase every year outside of uh, the the COVID year that was kind of different. So um, I think you know we definitely continue to make that because what we have to understand is when we give raises, so do other people. So uh, trying to make up that ground sometimes can take a little while to get there. But uh, I would do the same. I would commit to uh, to us continue to make that a priority in every budget that we make moving forward. Following up on that, Dr. Reiswick, you also raised another point which I thought was really interesting in your presentation, talking about the disparity between the racial disparity in terms of uh, students in the classroom and the racial representation among the teacher ranks, how significant, how broad the difference was. I think 17% maybe uh, black student attendance versus a very small percentage of uh, black students, uh, teachers rather. That's, a, that's an important wall to get over, but it's also tough how are you thinking you can accomplish that? That's a good point. And so, yeah, our teacher, uh, our, our, our black teacher is below 3% uh, that we have. And so uh, it, it is important. It's, it's very important to me that our student body, I mean, excuse me, that our teaching force, you know, is representative of our student body. I think that's important for, um, for students to be able to see successful uh, professionals uh, that, that share uh, potentially common experiences and common backgrounds. Uh, and, and it's difficult. I mean, uh, I think uh, trying to uh, recruit in folks at this point is hard. And, and I would just say, you know, the name of the game has probably changed a little bit uh, for a human resource strategy. Um, in the past, it was kind of go to teacher recruitment fairs and, you know, hope, hope they pick up your pencil and will come to your, uh, to your county. Uh, and really what we're seeing across the board in the state um, is that the educational prep providers of the universities are not really cranking out the number of teachers that they did in the past. So. Uh, we've got to we've got to think uh, about more alternative pathways. Uh, we have some programs like Grow Your Own uh, that we are are launching currently with Austin East Fulton and Central High School to try to identify those juniors and seniors um, who have a, an aptitude to want to teach, uh, and then try to identify them and support uh, and, and connection through uh, their time at either Pellissippi and or the University of Tennessee to hire them back as teachers. Uh, we're also looking at some uh, other alternative pathways to certification. Uh, now where there's a way that if you if you want to teach uh, where we've worked with one uh, group individual or one group that has done some things in Memphis and also in Nashville that have, done, have had a success and, and bringing people who have degrees into the teaching profession. Uh, they bring them in and they're allowed to start teaching uh, right at the beginning with some mentorship and then taking coursework kind of at night either online or uh, or live and then able to get their certification while they earn that. So uh, we, we have to really shift our attention again from that we just post um, jobs to actually going out and recruiting and marketing for people. Uh, and, and it's a great profession. I've said all along, teachers are who will shape the future of Knox County. And I think if we get that message out into church groups and the community groups into uh, different types of things and, and we have the customer service on our side to uh, respond within 24 hours and people reach out you know it's really it's much more competitive now we're going to have to uh, to upgrade um, to get to that uh, through our human resource department susan yeah um one of the things you mentioned as a priority was algebra along with your reading levels in elementary school there's a huge emphasis on stem now not only in our state but around the country and we're having a difficult time finding graduates that uh, can go to work in these areas. What 
can you do? What kind of emphasis will you have to put on getting our students more involved in, in STEM, the engineering, technology, science, and math? Um, and that, that is a priority of yours, as I understand it. No, you're correct. And I think there's a couple ways we could do that. You know, one is definitely that focus on math because that's a skill that has to happen. You know, the, the numbers you're referencing, most of our eighth graders who um, who are kind of honors and higher performing take, take out around the eighth grade. So just looking at the students who take it in ninth grade, uh, we have about a 7% proficiency in that. Um, prior to, to the pandemic, it was at 14%. So we definitely, that's why we're focusing in on that as a priority about we doing those middle school years to get them ready for that. But I think, you know, another place we touch on that is STEM is very much a career and tech ed program. Um, as I said earlier, our goal is for every high school, uh, and that really begins kind of in, in the feeder middle schools as well, has a robust career and tech ed program. And we're seeing programs like STEM programs and coding programs and robotics programs really uh, take life there. Uh, part of what we're doing is we've been partnering with uh, Ford Next Generation Learning uh, to really reimagine our high school experiences. Uh, seven of our high schools are going through that currently, um, and the others will come on in other cohorts. And really that's about um, paring down your career and tech ed program so that you have depth instead of kind of a one shot, but you have multiple options and exits and off ramps, uh, be that straight to work, be that to, en to enlist in um, the military or to enroll into a college or post-secondary when they leave. So we're really trying to build robust programs, bring in local business and industry to partner with those individual schools so that those students have internships, teachers have externships to see how that goes. Uh, and that will begin next year in those seven schools with us starting with freshman academies in those seven schools and really building teacher teams around students at every grade level that also are themed to careers. So uh, we think that has a lot of potential. One other area is we're really working on our six through 12 intentional counseling that will allow aptitude testing uh, and career exposure for all students no matter what school they're in so that we can uh, have them at least exposed to careers before they leave. Dr. John Reiswick, you've been generous with your time. We appreciate it and best of luck in your new role as superintendent as you take over for Bob Thomas later this year and we'll certainly be in touch at the start of the next school year if not before that. Thank you for your time and we'll see you soon. We'll be back with our talk around right after this.